to the armory that's become their information center, loved ones of the missing kept coming tonight. Families like the LaFrances here from Atlanta looking for their brother, Alan, who was on floor 110 on Tuesday. The dream is at this point that we'll find him in a hospital somewhere and that he's too injured to contact us and we'll be able to nurse him back to health and bring him home. Pictures of the missing are posted all over town. A family from Staten Island was out tonight taping up flyers of Troy Nielsen. They think this photo of people escaping Tuesday is of Troy. There's been disasters where people were found over a week later, so I think it's still kind of early yet to, to give up, especially when you really care for someone. But the digging at Ground Zero has found no survivors. Few, if any, remain in hospitals unidentified, and officials say today that few intact bodies will be found. We have recovered uh, bodies, and we have recovered parts of bodies. There's no way to know how many we're going to recover. To help identify the dead from body parts, more friends and relatives like Jonathan Weil are bringing DNA samples, cells from underwear, toothbrushes. This is for my friend Jeff, and this is his hairbrush. My hope is that we can find some, find some, know something, because all we have is a lack of information. But four days after the New York skyline changed forever and the nation went to war, the Attorney General says the investigation's making progress. We believe that the, the picture is developing a kind of clarity that's appropriate. Two men with possible ties to the terrorists are in New York tonight after their arrests in Texas. And their Jersey City apartment has been searched by the FBI. A third man, Zakaris Musawi, is also in custody and will be questioned about his flight training at this school in Minnesota. An army of rescue workers and FBI agents at work tonight as families like the LaFrances keep searching for the nearly 5,000 victims of Tuesday's terrorism.